This is Eldritch Buds, an actual play Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition podcast. What's up, Eldritch Buddies? Sitting at the virtual table with me today is Scott. Sneaky, stealthy, and in a greasy hole, level 3 rogue Cambrio Vox. Wills. Everybody's favorite, level 3 sorcerer rogue. Zed. Speedy. The big bad bot himself. The level three fighter bard, Chode. And Josh. Jinxie, the level three Loxodon, Druid, with one tusk. Or so we think. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, already off the rails. Uh, And I am your giant lizard daddy, DM (laughs) Connor. Previously on Eldritch Buds, our heroes entered the Erasmus Mansion and agreed to accept the terms of John Henry's contract. Their first task, solve the issue of the rotting smell coming from an old mine shaft. After some exploring of the mansion and a good night's rest for most, our heroes set off in search for the answer to their quest. Upon entering the mine shaft, our heroes run into a giant lizard. Could this be the source of the smell? Will our heroes stand tough? Or will they scream, I wanna go home? Let's find out. Uh, so, we're picking right up from where we last uh, left off, guys. Jinxie, as you uh, finish your introduction to today's episode, uh, and you're walking through the subterranean darkness with your torch illuminating the room, I believe we left off with a giant... Uh, lizard, giant reptile, turning his toothy maw, dripping with saliva and uh, crazy look in his eyes. And uh, as he snarls at you, I need everybody in this room to roll me some initiative. Oh boy. Oh, guys, this is not looking good. Spooky, scary, blows of mine. Okay. Uh, who's up first? I got a 21. I got a 24. Okay, okay Cambrio. That 20 on wow. initiative gives me nothing, correct? Just gives me the 24? Correct. You get to go so extra. That's, that's right. Uh, so Cambrio, Jinxie, who else is that? It'll that? be uh, Zed at 14. And showed after that. Yeah, I rolled a 10 just in case the lizard rolled okay. over. Perfecto. Uh, so that means that as this snarling lizard meets eye to eye with Jinxie, the trembling mammoth tusks and your hands shaking with the torch, uh, Cambrio, you get to kick us off here. Okay. Who uh, would be? Who would be? Um, so first things first, uh, Jinxie's right beside it, right? Yeah, yeah, so okay. Jinxie is within five feet or so, as you can see in the BTT. Julio, don't gotta wait until for sneak attacks. I'm just gonna... Um, is any of this on the map really real, or is it mostly just set dressing? Uh, it's mostly set dressing, so yeah, the, to paint the picture, there's bones, uh, mining equipment, uh, discarded gauntlets, and a boot, and, you know, just general dirtiness. It's an old abandoned mine. It hasn't, you know, had any workers in it for at least 10 years. It's a flat surface about 200 or so feet um, in diameter. And yeah, it's essentially just a big fight pit. This is where you would assume maybe the miners, you know, ate or uh, slept or something like that. Okay. Uh, So I'm just going to try to... Sixty feet. That's really far. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> square is five feet. So I'm just gonna take my movement. I'm just gonna pretend starting that square. So fine. Uh, I'm just going right to there to sort of line up. Uh, first things first is I'm just gonna yeah, th- throw the old psychic knife at it. Dirty twenty. 
Hell. Dirty boy. That's seven. Okay, uh, and then there'll be a little a little bonus action. Uh, second knife appears in the other hand. Same thing. Little flick of the wrist at this big old lizard. Okay. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen hits. Nice. Boom. That's another seven. And then because okay. I'm just a I'm just a sneaky boy, it's gonna roll that two d six sneak attack. <laughs> just an extra four damage on top of that. Perfect. Such so be nineteen in total. Just Is too there quick. Anything else that Cambria wants to do? Yeah. Um, so as you can't as really you use my your... bonus action to make the second attack, so I can't really hide or anything. So now I'll just be chilling there. Perfect. Yeah. So as you as you toss both these psychic knives at this gargantuan uh, reptile in front of Jinxie, to just sink under like the gills on its uh, right hand, or I guess it would be his left hand side, uh, drawing some dark ichor sliming from his throat. Mm, they actually don't. They leave oh, nowhere. you're right. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. That is a DM error. So, yeah, what you assume would be Dark Icker... Just turn the podcast is, uh, up okay. <laughs> Unplugged. <laughs> ...is uh, simple ghost scars that fade after half a second. Uh, okay, so that brings us down to Jinxie. What are you going to do, Jinxie? So, Jinxie is going to take one look at this giant-ass fucking lizard in front of it, look back at, at Zed... And as a bonus action, it's going to cast Healing Ward. Healing Ward. Okay. So... Uh, that's six. A little over. Okay. And just say, here, take this! After he looks a little beat up from just getting to see the lizard. <laughs> that put them poison and then... Man. And then, I'm going to Wild Shape into Grand Bear. Oh, damn, okay. So there's your action to wild yep. shape into a brown bear. And We should probably um, get you a bear token for this, eh? Yeah. That would be pretty cool. I can make a... Yeah, I'll, I'll do that on the side. Um, so, and then that's my turn. Okay, perfect. Uh, that brings us to the lizard. So this gargantuan monster snarls and makes this clicking sound from its throat. Uh, right, in, right in your face, Jinxie. Uh, it did notice that uh, it, it was dealt some pain by the uh, figure slumping off about 20 feet to its left. So it's actually going to move over here. Not leaving your square, Josh. Uh, but he's going to do a bite attack on you, Jinxie. Just and a tail way. attack on you. Cambrio. With that 10 foot range on the tail attack? Yes, with that okay, 10 foot checking, reach with the tail checking. attack. Yo, don't you worry, big dog. Uh, okay, let's find out if this bite hits. Let's see. Oh, not so hot. A 13? Oh, that hits. A 13 hits, eh? Okay. On, on bear. On the bear. Oh, on the bear, yeah, that's right. Uh, and it's going to do. Unless. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, you take 14 piercing damage. Oh! Ooh. Yeah. Ouch! <laughs> and. That's uh, an endangered yeah, okay. species, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also need you to. Uh, roll me a. Uh, opposed grapple check so you're going to roll an athletics or an acrobatics and i'm going to roll a strength check and we're going to see if you stay in his mouth oh okay. boy 11 okay roll low Come oh, on. he rolled a nine what are his bonuses though 14 uh, yeah 14 <laughs> oh i knew it yeah very nice so yeah so you are uh in this lizard's mouth god Okay, uh, and then the tail is going to around. slam into uh, the back at Cambrio. It's going to try. It's going to try, that's for sure. And this one is an 11 to hit. It, it's not. No? Okay, it's perfect. So he's sliding around. He's, yeah, he swings <laughs> his tree trunk of a, of a tail around. But it's just a little bit slow. And Cambrio, you're very dexterous, so you're able to just do a quick little 
like jump rope over this thing as it sweeps your legs, and you are a okay. I look bored throughout. Yeah, just it's just no so big deal. Said, just not phased. <laughs> yeah, it's no big deal to you. A little bit as of tail skip. Zed, that brings us to you, my friend. Yeah, um, Zed uh, doesn't love the size of this and the fact that he is an absolute weakling when it comes to taking damage. He's going to take a few steps back. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Just making sure he's well within that 120 foot range of a firebolt. And we're going to launch, uh, we're going to launch one of those. So. Nice. Ooh, is a 14 going to hit? A 14 is just enough to hit. Oh, wonderful. So let's try some damage here. That will be 10 damage of the fire variety. Okay. Nice. Great job. Wicked. And we'll promptly uh, end Zed's turn. Perfect. Yeah, so as you launch this fiery arcane blast towards it, it smokes into its face. Ah! And you can see, like, the the, the uh, old dry skin that he's kind of in the process of molting out of flake away uh, as, uh, yeah, you land a pretty nice blow to him. Uh, that brings us to the Chode. All right. Chode is going to kind of assess the situation. Um... And I'm going to cast uh, Speak with Animals. Okay. <laughs> and um, so I will cast that. Sure. Can you read me the specifics? Absolutely. Does that have to um, be a willing creature or? You gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration. The uh, duration's 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, we'll say that you can now understand and speak whatever lizard... Uh, phrases what do you say this is going to uh, if it's if it's kind of submersive enough it's going to be your action though if you're you know gonna be speaking to him and talking to him yeah well i assume okay. casting it would have counted yeah, as my action so a great point um but yeah so i'll i'll be like hey guy. so before i start talking to him to cast a spell my other um like bolt in my jaw i can like twist it and then my eyes turn green to like kind of show that the, the spell is activated. Um, I'll be like, excuse me, Mr. Big Lizard over here. Um, if this is getting through, we may have an understanding or a misunderstanding. Um, are you are you making all this, this stink? Is this you? Are you a stinky man? <laughs> are you a stinky lizard? What, what is this you? And if it's you, what the hell, man? Okay, sure. Uh, any bonus action to throw on top of that, or is that your turn? Um, what, does he say anything back? Uh, yeah, sure. So he looks at you, and with Jinxie in his mouth, <laughs> uh, he looks over at you, and you know how, like, <laughs> this is going to sound so dumb, but like when snakes are angry, they get like the slits in their eyes, like they narrow mm. Yeah. Well, if that happens, and he looks at you and drops Jinxie. So, Jinxie, you're no longer grappled. And I know this is out of turn order, but just for flavor. He looks at you, Chode, and he says, Delicious! Another one! And he looks poised to strike you on his next turn. Cool. Um, all right. Um, then I'll be like, well, clearly there's no talking to you. So I'll use my uh, bonus action, I guess, for two weapon fighting. Because I can use one of my hand axes for that. Okay, yeah, sure. So out of, in my legs, you see one of, like, there's a little compartment that opens up and out pops a, a hand axe. And I'm going to throw it at him. Okay, let's see it, buddy. All right. Yeah, I... For sure, miss nine. <laughs> yeah, a nine unfortunately does miss. Yeah, so it just goes. Whoa. That's okay. Well, yeah. that didn't. So, work. yeah, you'll have to retrieve that after combat if there is an after combat. Uh, that brings <laughs> us back to the top, Cambrio. What are we doing here? As you just deftly avoided a tail strike. As I deftly avoid that tail strike, I want to emphasize deftly. Uh, I want to smell the lizard. 
Yeah, why don't you roll me a perception check, please? Okay. Ooh. Check, check, check. Check, check, please. Perception. Plus three. Please be kind. Very kind. Very I'm so kind. receptive. I got a good sniffer. Yeah, a great I smell the good 20. fruit from the rotten Not fruit. 20. Sure. So, with this natural 20, as the uh, pheromones of this area glide into your nostrils, we're going to zoom in uh, a la Jimmy Neutron going to his mind palace when we see kind of mm. the inner workings of his brain. Sniff, we're following, sniff, yeah, we're following that <laughs> We're following the pheromones up Cambrio's nose. And you can just see that reference. that's unlocking a whole Sherlock mind palace of like this Ruba, Rubik's cube of, of Cambria's brain just unlocking. And Cambria, what you notice with this is it smells disgusting down here. And no doubt a good chunk of it is coming from Mr. Lizard himself. However, he doesn't match the smell of the fields around the area. Uh, you do sniff, 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 sniff around and your nose points you to the back of the room where the lizard was uh, and kind of where he uh, approached you all from, there's something in that back corner that smells much more likely to be the source of whatever stink is in this area. Okay, but it's also much less likely to be actively trying to kill us. I believe before we set out on this journey, I did my little psychic whispers uh, with Chode and uh, with Zed. Yep. Yes. So we're hanging you, you out. You cut so, Jinxie out of the... Well, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Can I... Yeah, no, yeah, I think he's not kidding. Um, can, can I... Because that's like a two-way connection. Like, I'm just going to be like, what's the what's the lizard saying? That was too uh, chill, sorry. He's saying that he wants to eat us. That's what he's saying. <laughs> that's I, not going to work for me. No. All right, so I'm just going to... Ooh, fun, crunchy D&D rule question. I'm within the 10-foot range. Does moving away still count as, like, leaving his square for an attack of opportunity? Do you know that leaving somebody's attack range and their square will provoke, but I don't know. You've never tried this before. Okay, well, I'm still not going to because I'm going to use a bonus action and disengage. Okay. Back up a little bit. And then he's just got another... Sure. As I'm running back, it's just like I'm doing the Naruto run, but as my hands go back, it's just one hand, psychic blade, right out behind me as we're going. Uh, but okay, I can only cool. do one this turn because I use my bonus action. So let me roll that. Well, you use your bonus action to disengage and you use your action to perceive the smell. So that unfortunately does it for you, my friend. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I didn't know that, that was an action. But okay, and yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so that brings us to the bear himself. Sorry, I would communicate that in back of the cave seems to be where the smell is coming from to the rest of the little psychic network. Sure, that's fine. That's a fine okay, rest of turn. So, Jinx, you've just been dropped from this reptile's mouth. Uh, he did a fair amount of damage to you, and uh, it's now your turn. What do you want to do? So, uh, Jinx, he gets left out again of the psychic group. Uh, <laughs> you mean, you were in it the first time. I know. I, Jinx, he just felt, like, finally in. Like, just so, so happy. Gotcha. But I guess Jinxie wouldn't know there's another psychic group. So Jinxie still, still thinks, thinks he's, he's in the group. psychic group. Yeah. It's just not active right yeah. now. Yeah. No one said anything. Yeah. yeah. The the notifications are on do not disturb. <laughs> <laughs> Snooze. Um, yeah. He is talking to the group. He's just like sending messages out into the void in his own <laughs> yeah, head. Sending memes and stuff. <laughs> like, hey, what do you guys think of this one? He's just, he's just thinking. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're not read yet. So, you know, they're just busy. They're busy. Yeah. They don't have their brains on them. Yeah. <laughs> Silly guys. Um, so Brown Bear Jinxie is going to, yeah, fall to the ground, uh, and then look up at the lizard, do another bear roar, and okay. use its bite attack. Sure. Yeah, go ahead and uh, bite that reptile. I'm gonna bite him back. Uh, 18 plus 5. Yeah, that hits. Nice. So, bite that bitch. Uh, 5. 5 damage. Okay. And Perfect. then I'm going to use the claw attack. We'll swipe after the bite. I think that's dirty 20. Yep. That also hits. Nice. Uh, 11. 11 with the slashes. Great job. Um, nice, nice. Yeah, so so Bear Jinx, he just gouges a large chunk of 
green meat out of this reptile's shoulder and carves a nice stroke out of the chest. And uh, yeah, you, you, you can certainly see the black Icarus uh, liquid spilling from uh, these wounds now. And then just gonna move just again to the front. Uh, sure. And then just stay there. Okay. And that's my turn. Yeah, Stage that's gonna bring us. Yeah, that's gonna bring us to uh, the reptile himself, and he's gonna use his move to not leave your square, Josh, but just reposition here. And he is going to. Okay, he is going to do the tail attack on the bear behind him, and he's going to chomp down on the Warforged Chode in front of him. Should have stayed where I was. <laughs> yeah, you made that actually a lot easier for me. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Twenty-four to hit you, Josh. Tried to, that hits. Yep. Okay. Ooh. My health. Oh my god, that's max damage. Seventeen uh, bludgeoning damage. Ooh, bears, bears, yeah, you're bears big, looking you're big, hurt. Bear, you're a big. Okay. Bear is is looking like Leo in Revenant, not the bear. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, any extra damage, Josh? Like, if you only had one health there left. The additional 16 would go to your druid form. Um, no, no, I'm not dead yet. I still have three health. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Just looking rough. Yep, and the bite on Chode is a... Oh, so lucky it was almost a natural 17. That's only a 10. Yeah, that misses. Okay, perfect. And uh, what he's going to do is he's going to start... Um, uh, you know what? No, he's not going to do anything else. <laughs> uh, it's going to be... I think that's Zed now. Yeah, Zed's turn. I don't like where that's going. Yeah, so uh, Zed does not uh, enjoy seeing this gap closed. Um, so we're going to space out again. Try and keep himself away from this giant lizard. Um, that first attack seemed pretty effective, though, so we're going to try it. Again. No, we are not. I lied. I'm just going to pull out the crossbow um, and, and, and sure. try his luck with that. Okay, absolutely. Give it a shot. How does a nat one do for you? Very nice. I need you to uh, roll me another uh, d20 roll. Like, roll me another attack. If it meets Chode's AC, you're going to hit him. Six plus five is eleven. Nope. Yeah. So, so Chode, as you just definitely, I know you know what this wasn't as definitely as Cambrio. Sorry, Cambrio. As you dodge out of the way of this uh, lizard's bite, a bolt comes screaming in your direction and clatters off your shoulder. So it did hit you, but it didn't do any damage. And you look over and you just see Zed <laughs> frantically <laughs> reloading a, a shot. My body's not going to move, but my head's just going to slowly turn to him, like... <laughs> Better watch it over there. So, like, slowly turn <laughs> so, so unbothered. Yeah, so um, knowing we have our little uh, telekinetic group chat going on, uh, so it will offer up a quick little... Uh, Telepath. My bad. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm not... You know. Wills isn't Moving smart at it, okay? No! <laughs> That'll let my Okay, uh, that brings us back up to Cambrio. No, it's my turn. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It's Cho's turn. Whew. That is that is Warforged Erasure. Yeah. I will not stand for it. Yeah. <laughs> so now that he's nice and close, and he clearly didn't listen to me talking, um, I'm going to be like, all right, man, I tried to play nice, but we're not getting nice, so I'm going to have to kill you. And I'm going to... Uh, swing my greatsword at him. That would be a 24 to hit. <laughs> yes, a 24 hits. Yeah. Ouch. Um, for 12 damage. Okay, 12 damage. Okay. So greatsword and... sinks into uh, the chest of the lizard, drawing more blood. What else? Yeah. Um, for my bonus action, um, you're going to see me like I'm going to, in our heads, um, over to uh, Cambrio. I'm going to be like, hey, Goldilocks, this one's for you. 
and I'm going to turn one of the knobs um, and press it in on my chest, and um, out of the horn comes this big blast, and it's a big song, and it's a uh, what's up. It's a what's up by uh, the Four Non Blondes, like the song from like the like the. Hey, yeah, 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 and it's like, yeah. Because um, yeah. you you have white hair, but I call you Goldilocks, so I figured it's a non-blonde. So, and I'm gonna give you bardic inspiration. So can't you can hear that. Heard you can hear that in your head until right now, and it's just like an almost. Honestly, it's so it's just in my head. I think I'm having like a vision. Cambrio found a little well, bit I, of faith that he did, like he's like there might yeah. be a god. Yeah. Um, Everybody okay, can sick. hear he's the just, music. He's just but, like, honestly, it it's you. I'm, I'm rolling like you can't hear my headphones, and I'm just bopping. Sweet. Nice. Go get him, ghost knives. That's everything. That will that will be it. I'm not moving. Okay, Goldilocks, ghost knives. It's your turn. Perfect. As the most inspired person in the group, I get to spend a lot of time trying to get back towards the fight. Uh, are we are we doing the um, the First one's five, then five. ten. Yeah. Yeah, it's just every every other one is a five or ten. Okay, so five, ten. So five, fifteen, twenty, thirty. Yeah, I can go there. No, he's got a long lost tail. Uh just you know, knowingly staying out of the way of that tail. Um quick again though, sneaked up this time, knowing he's got all his moves, all his things. Uh just gonna go ghost knife out of one sleeve real quick. Mm-hmm. Where'd you go? Sorry. Switch to the fuzzy dice so you guys don't get that wet schmuck. Uh, 16, sorry. 16 hits, yeah. Okay, D6 plus 4. Nice. Ooh, that's 9. Ooh, nice. nice. Immediately ripping out that other nice. one, though. As soon as he follows that, sees that first one kind of lands true, second one aimed at right at the same spot. 15. 15 also hits, yeah. Nice. nice. 1, D4 plus 4. That's five damage. <laughs> Again, because he has no allies around him. Anytime my boys are near him, we have advantage. It's a sneaky little attack. Snake eyes, because it's a lizard. That's appropriate. Mm-hmm. Thematic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Very fitting. I'm just kind of, so it's just, it's just like a third little kind of throwing dagger kind of whips out, I guess, and just it doesn't do as much. Trying to infinitely okay. just perfect. stand there, and it's like a big crescendo with no resolution. Yeah, uh, Jinxie Bear. Jinxie, so Jinxie's going to go and uh, bear bite attack this big-ass lizard's tail, try to bite it off. Oh. <laughs> sure, go ahead and bite his tail off. Bite it off. Uh, 11. 11, yeah, so you bite into the bony hard tail and you can't find purchase with your bare teeth maybe it's just because you're weak weak um <laughs> and then uh kind of falling back after missing the the bite you're gonna try to claw at it sure yeah go ahead uh 15 uh 15 hits go ahead and roll damage Uh, 11. 11 damage. Holy moly. Good stuff. Okay, so your bear claws are able to kind of carve into the back tail hide of this lizard, and uh, it whips its head over and growls at you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's that's your turn? That's everything? Uh, yeah, and they're just gonna, you know, bear, bear cry at it. <laughs> <laughs> I meant like weep, which is like a crying uh, bear. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, just why did you bite me? Yeah. That's is, this is the lizard's turn. Uh, so the lizard, even though it just took a lot of damage elsewhere, is still very much focused on you, Chode. It's very strange. Um, Robophobe. He's going to roll to see if he can bite you. He certainly does. That's a 26 to hit. Oh, that hits. Uh, you oh. take. Eight damage, really? That was like the minimum damage I could have rolled. Uh, and instead of a tail attack this time, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need you to roll me a grapple check. 
So athletics or acrobatics trying to escape his mouth and not be held. You're a fucking god damn it. Uh, nine. Yeah, 17 over here. So you are trapped in its mouth, and instead of a tail attack, Speedy, he's gonna try and swallow you. Uh, so I need to still hit you on this attack. Oh no. This motherfucker. He's gonna. Um, oh. I'm gonna straight Let's up see if crack he can find... rip him out from the inside. He's gonna oh. swallow the, the metal condom. Man, I'm sorry. This lizard is strong. That's a 21 to successfully swallow you there, Speedy. Um, okay, so here's what happens. Uh, you take 3d6 acid damage, which is 14 acid damage. Um, does that count as poison damage? It does not count as poison damage, unfortunately. Oh. So I'm not resistant to that. Yeah. So I take 14. Yep. And you are now inside the belly of the lizard. And each additional turn you spend in there is an automatic 3d6 acid damage. You are considered uh, blinded and restrained. And you have total cover against external attacks. So essentially what happens is you, you need to attack from the inside, but it's at disadvantage because you're restrained. Okay. Or Great. the outside people need to do enough damage to essentially kill it. And that brings right. us to our next competitor, uh, Zed. So you just saw your robot compatriot be swallowed whole by this giant yes, lizard. Yes, I just saw this giant lizard swallow a six foot eight chode. So yeah, um, that's concerning to say the least. Um, <laughs> that's enough to get Zed to actually move closer towards danger, which says a lot. So let's see how far you can move. Yeah. stay just outside of that tail that he's seen whipping around. That 10 foot tail. Yeah, yeah, you'd consider that out, clear that range. That's perfect. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, fine. Yeah, that's about 15 feet away. And we will try our luck with the crossbow again. So he okay. already has it out. Try to hit Joe this time. And that's going to be Please. a 17. 17 hits. Why don't you go ahead and roll some damage? Yes. You just can't miss the robot. Six within, plus three will be beast. nine damage. Okay. Plus a s little sneak attack bonus. Love that. Four more. Okay, so perfect. 13. Um, yeah, this, uh, the lizard is looking weak. Um... So there's a yeah there's there's a mathematical chance that he doesn't get a turn again, but it's you're gonna need to do some damage here, boys. Uh, sorry, that brings us uh, to our next uh, individual chode. Cut to inside of the black stomach where your hands and feet feel tight, like in a uh, too small sleeping bag. I will say for flavor, you can still hear the song playing like through the lizard, <laughs> like it's just like. <laughs> Um, That's great. All I'm right, just spamming well, messages into the telepathic chat. Like, yeah. you up, man? You all right? Yeah. In my head, you hear, you guys better get me the fuck out of here. Um, spin! Spin! So I will Gator use... Roll. Gator roll. <laughs> yeah. I will, I will use my uh, bonus attack to... Or bonus action, sorry, to uh, use my second wind. Okay. Um, Smart. Smart. Yeah. So I gain 1d10 plus 2. Okay. All right, so I get eight health back. That's Huzzah. very, nice. very huge. That's yeah, that's close. gaining back strength. Up to Sixteen. The yeah, a little bit more manageable. A little bit out of the danger zone. Okay, and then um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and get out of here. I'm just gonna like tracks in Guardians Two when he goes inside and he's just like stabbing away. I'm gonna do that sure. with my great sword. So I'm just gonna be slashing from the inside. 
Okay, with disadvantage, please roll me your attack. Yeah. I can't give some sort of help through our chat, just through like encouragement. Like you're doing it, man. Well, I don't know if I can do worse than a three, so but we'll roll <laughs> yeah. anyways. <laughs> I almost did. I got a five on the second one. Okay, well, unfortunately, uh, neither of those yeah, hits. All right. So it just, I, I would say right, it just, well, it's hard to even like grab your sword uh, in there. Like, so you're trying to grab it and you're trying to slash it, but like, yeah. you just don't have a, like it's slippery and slimy in there. You just can't really get the attack off. Could, could I use like an athletics or like a strength deck to see if I can pull myself out? Uh, yeah. So typically you'd have to burn an action for that, but I am Shit yourself, make God, grow and I will allow you. No, I was, yeah. I was going to action surge for it, so... Uh, well, you, just, you already used your second wind. Oh, no, action surge you can just do. I'm sorry. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, action surge is another. Yeah, all right. Okay. So I'm going to action surge. I'm going to try and uh, pull myself out now that I realize I can't really get my sword out. Sure. Yeah, so it's going to be an opposed. You can either do acrobatics or athletics. He's going to try and hold you in there. Come on, guys. All right. That's good. He didn't roll that 23. Great. Oh, he doesn't even come close. He got a 12. So, nice. let me read you exactly what happens when you succeed. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, oh, it doesn't actually say. Yeah, it just says that you climb out with a successful uh, grapple check. So, yeah, you he kind of coughs you and spits you out as you're, like, climbing out. You're grabbing hold of, like, his... What's the little dangly thing in your esophagus? Like the little punching bag from Osmosis Jones? The dangly uvula. Dangly, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. dangly thing yeah. in the yeah. boxer yeah, shorts. Like... No, throw! Dick joke in a chat. So you, grab the, you, you grab the lizard's uvula. He doesn't like that. and He just projectile vomits you right, <laughs> uh, right in front of you. You are there, prone, Chode. That's okay. As I'm laying on the ground, I'll be like, Never mind, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Uh, okay, and that brings us to Cambrio. So Cambrio, as soon as he saw Chode get swallowed, it's been an eventful, you know, 15 feet of movement, uh, would have kind of started, you know, realizes he needs to do some physical damage. The ghost knives aren't going to be helpful for trying to cut someone out of a body. Um, so hands drop mm -hmm. to his, his side. Rapier comes out into his hand as he's running in. Um, awkwardly, though, as he's launching in, no matter what happens with the hits, he just sees... Cho deal with it like on its own he hears in like yeah. a psychic chat like yeah. no I'm good like, don't worry uh, but he's already committed to this yeah. so he's leading in with the rapier going right at kind of the gut right where Cho would have been oh my God, okay so ooh that'd be 25 nice okay 25 hits roll your rapier right. damage plunging this in uh, wasn't worth it six uh, second attack is just going to be a dagger coming off the other hip, just kind of out from under the cloak. It's only a 12. Sure. Ooh. Hit. 12 misses, unfortunately. Inspiration is a d4? D6. Yes. However, D6. no, I'm sorry, guys. I've already I've already announced that it hasn't hit, though. You Failed. didn't call that Ooh. before. That was, that okay. was quick by YouTube me. YouTube question, though. Is it a d6 reference. or a d4? Because I didn't know if it made D6. a difference then. Still inspired. Yeah. Um, too distracted yeah, so, though so by the dominant daggers. lizard. I've never seen a lizard, let alone one vomit, <laughs> yeah. so it's been a big day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay, Camber, is that your turn? Oh, but I, uh, no, because I hit, so there's still a sneak attack coming in. That's true, yeah, that's fair. You just need seven damage. Side by side. <laughs> okay. So, sneak attack nice has a job. bunch of weird rules on it where it, it used to just be like, you hear, clearly have to be like hidden and sneaky. And now, like, yeah. if, I, if one of my allies are within it and one of its allies aren't within five feet of it, it just counts because it's, like, distracted oh, by sick. you guys. Nice. But, yeah, and that'll be yeah. it. Okay. Jinxie, can you finish him off this turn? We'll find out. <laughs> so Come cool. on, football. Oh, what's it? Uh, 18. So... 18 is a hit. Yeah, let's see if he can do any damage here. Uh, nine damage on the oh, bite attack. Okay. Yeah. And then claws. Going right back at it. Uh, 
Uh, 14. 14 is the AC, so go ahead and roll damage. It's possible here. It's possible. Slashy slash. Um, what's the plus? Uh, 11 damage. <laughs> he lives. Oh. Oh. Um, okay, is that your turn, Jinxie? Uh, that is Jinxie's bear turn. Okay, so uh, panic sets into this reptile. You can see in his face, like he's starting to look around and dart uh, back at each of you. Though not an intelligent creature, he's not a stupid creature. He wants to survive. So one of the things that we've been saving for this fight has been a tail smash. Um, where I need everybody within. F What's that? The creature was just taking it easy on us. Like they, they just revealed it's left-handed or some shit. Well, no, it's it's a it's a recharge ability and it's hard to get back. So um, I need the three of you because you're all within five feet to roll me a dexterity saving throw, please. As the tail slams down behind and causes like a ground shake effect. This is to keep your uh, footing. Sixteen. Nineteen. Uh, okay. Technically, I Perfect. rolled the twenty-one as a dex check. I then re-rolled it as a dex save, but it was the worst. yeah. That's fine. All, all of you pass anyway, um, but you do take half damage. Oh shit! Yeah. Which is only three bludgeoning damage for each of you. Um, Bear's dead. Oh, bludgeoning. Hey, Bear's dead. Yeah, th three bludgeoning damage. Oh, uh, interesting. Why is that? Just creating mystery. Oh, nice. I see what you did there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know what? He's going to flee, or try to at least. Um, so he's going to run away. The three of you can take a attack of opportunity. Chode, I believe you're still prone. Yeah. So you'd have to do this at disadvantage. Okay. Although, I guess you didn't have to roll a dex check, which is a trade-off. It was, I think, if it was a nat 20 on the... Say maybe, oh, I that's pop, true. maybe I popped up. Yeah, that's true. Against 21 with the ripe here. Okay. 11. Okay, yeah. So uh, I'm going to call. Seven extra. Well, I'm going to call it as this, boys. Uh, Chode and Cambria both sink your weapons into this giant lizard as it flees and loses its final hit, hit point. How do you guys want to do the joint kill cam together? Mm. I see um, we just do like a Wonder Twin sort of like hacking it from the left, hacking it from the right, and we just meet in the middle. Like we're just pew, 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 until you just get all the way through. We're just vivisecting it at halfway, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was going to say either that or I like, I pick you up and I throw you through him with your like, with your rapier Toss up me. and it just like, yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Dude, scrap the first idea. We do that. He uses me as a human javelin. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so you were right through this lizard. Yeah, you're tossed. And uh, yeah, you go absolutely flying through this lizard. I need Scott, you to please roll me a constitution saving throw, please, as you go through a big water balloon of acid. Oh. 12. Okay, that would be full damage. Uh, you take. Uh oh, not that it really matters because it's after combat, but uh, you take nine acid damage. Okay, that's fine. From that. really but you emerge from <laughs> you emerge from this stinky lizard uh, who isn't the source of the stink, victorious, and with a groan and a cry, the lizard dies. Oh. Yeah. Congratulations, Ooh, guys. Best, sort of Ooh, walking away from it as I'm like, I do like a little marble landing, start walking away from it as it's like collapsing behind me. You know, I'm just <laughs> Toucan Sam following my nose, looking around for that scent. Okay. That, that I'm nat say 20 that, scent. Yeah, I was going to say, because you already rolled me a nat 20 during the fight, I'll just say that you do That's what I meant. I'm just like it. walking back to where I know it's coming yeah. from. Yeah. So like a bloodhound with your nose in the air, just exactly pinpointing, you know, where this smell is emanating from. Um, 
you notice that amongst the bones and the dry, chewed, leathery skins in the corner of the mine, you come upon something that is certainly out of the ordinary. Sticking out of the wall with gnaw marks all over it, almost as if this lizard had been using it as like a chew toy, is the top half of a torso of a warforged roughly the same size as Chode. It has, uh, like like I said, just pockmarks, and like it looks so beat up and ragged, and like its jaw is kind of hanging askew. But you do see that there is dry, black, gooey oil that spills from this warforge, and he smells awful. And like you can see that as half of his body is sticking into the wall of this mine, like. You can kind of see these, like, veins of black, dark uh, something that is etching and bleeding into the earth itself, and you've kind of put two and two together. Ah, we found the source. We're just going to mind link over to the boys, but, uh, yeah, I've got, uh, Cho, you're my, I think you're probably the robot for the job for this, so I've got, I think, po- possible... I, I'm not going to say that you might know each other, because that feels wrong, but there just is another robot over here. What do you mean? I'd... I mean, it's a robot over here. We're going to gloss over that middle part. What did, what did, what did he look like? Uh, that's a question for me, or? Kind of like you. Not that you look alike. He looks like me, eh? All right. I'll, uh, just come see the robot. Yeah, I'll walk over as I'm as I'm doing that. I'll uh, I'll like pat Camber on the back because I'm like, hey, nice job with the with the javelin. Huh? We that was a pretty good maneuvers we did. I think snot Lugie had a little bit of acid and just just hold my hand out and sort of like a not. I'm trying to communicate. I want a predator handshake, like a forearm clasp. So it's like it's out yeah. with like a little grabby thing. I'm just kind of holding it there. Yeah. I'll look and be like, I'll do the, I'll do like the, it, it might be a lot of arm coming at you though. <laughs> it hurts, but I don't show it. Just yeah, do it. Okay. Zed is also <laughs> going to uh, walk over to the, where Cambrio said he spotted the Warforge. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. Is there still this liquid or whatever still actively coming out? Well, uh, sort of, kind of. So this is certainly the, like, without even an investigation rule, it's, it's clear to see this is the source of whatever kind of black oily substance uh, is breaching the earth. The problem, though, is that in here, it looks really dry, and it looks almost like a, a cut or a wound that's a few days old, where it's coagulating a little bit. It's not as fresh as it was up there. But yeah, it's still certainly, like, the source of this is whatever kind of blood or inside fluid was in this Warforged. All right, I'll walk up to him, see if I can recognize what what uh, what robot it is. Sure, um, Speedy, I need you to roll me uh, a history check, or for something else entirely, a medicine check. Um, I will roll the... Can I try to help with this? I'll roll the medicine check. Uh, sure. Which of... I'll let you help with the medicine check, Scott. I'm just gonna grab, like, sticks and dirt off the floor and try to, like, shove it up in the wound. This beaver <laughs> dam, that stuff. <laughs> sure, you can do this medicine check. With thank you. The, uh, thank you for the... Speedy. Thank you for the help. So, uh, inspire me, inspire you the right help back. help was Damn. huge. 19 on the advantage. Very nice. Okay, so with this medicine check, you kind of put two and two together that as you're investigating this body and you're kind of touching the oil on the inside and kind of rubbing it around in your exoskeleton fingers, it's clear to you that in all the fights that you've been in and in all the times that an enemy has cut you or made, you know, your internal, you know, call it robot blood, Anytime that you've seen that, it has not looked this color. It has not smelt like this. There hasn't been, like, it, it, it seems like this Warforge was pumped full of something completely different than what you are uh, composed of. So something seems off. Um, if you want to run me a history check to see if you recognize the, okay, the Warforged. 
12. Uh, okay, sure. So you know that each uh, Warforged is essentially branded when it is built with Dwarven runes somewhere. Uh, whether it's the chest, whether it's the head, what, you know, whatever the case may be. This one is different, um, but follows the same rule. Uh, on its chest plate, you can see that it is not Dwarven runes inlaid. It simply has the letters, and if you guys want to write this down, um, these are all capitalized. S, T, a little dot, C, O. And Speedy, because you yourself are Warforged and you have like intricate knowledge of the process of manufacturing Warforged, what you remember, you know, from the time that you were uh, created, is that there's only one place in Kungur uh, that is, you know, heavily regulated by the dwarves years ago that made uh, Warforged. If you were to guess, this one was not built there. It does not have any familiar tags or barcodes or anything that you in your programming would know to search for. Completely different entity. Okay. I'll uh, get up from like inspecting it. Turn around and be like, this, this is not, we're not the same. This was made hey, Rip, a huge sigh of relief. This was made somewhere else. Uh, it, it, that's not what I bleed. I don't bleed this. Uh, as you could tell, as I was getting eaten, I did not spooge this out. Um, it did and, throw uh, you up. The branding, the the branding is isn't like what the the factory that made me uh, did. So I don't know where this guy came from, but he ain't a brother in arms, if you know what I mean. Uh, Zed is going to walk over to the Warforge corpse. Um, kind of, I'm gonna. Can I make an investigation check on specifically the liquid? See if I would recognize what it is uh, specifically. Yeah, you know what I'm. You you know what I'll actually have you do. I'm gonna have you do an Arcana Absolutely. check because as a spellcaster, you can kind of smell the electricity in the air. Of like, wait, is this magic? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, five. <laughs> five. Yeah, so yeah, there is kind of a, f a faint magical arcane environment to this whole room, which is strange because it's an old abandoned door of mine, and the only thing living here was a giant lizard. Like, there was nothing arcane or spell-focused about the monster. So you know that whatever arcane energy that is in this room there's a high chance and possibility that it's coming from this Warforge. However, with a five, you're not sure what exactly the liquid is. You're not sure how it was created. You don't understand the school of magic. It's just a little bit outside of your realm. And maybe that's because, you know, you didn't study magic by books. It's more innate to you. You recognize that it is magic, but you, you can't put your finger on exactly what Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Can I do a little investigation? I just want to see if the Warforged is... Is somehow alive, or anything. I want to look at the body and just invade. Like, is he, or is sure. he just a corpse that I can set on fire? Uh, yeah, roll me an investigation check. Sixteen. Or I. E, 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 mm. Okay, sure. I was gonna say medicine too if you're checking vitals, but sixteen is fine. Is um, it really yeah, vitals so if it's doing... a robot? I'm checking if it's on. Well, that's uh, that's kind of the th yeah that's kind of the thing is you're kind of going over this thing and with a 16, you certainly determine that there is no life left in this husk of metal. Um, you also gain the understanding that there has been so many bite marks and chew marks. Like it's it's like a years old bone if you guys own dogs or a pet or something like that. Like it's there's so many different markings in it that you're lucky that you got the STCO letters because there's probably more. Um, but yeah, there's there's no signs of life coming from this this Warforged anymore. It looks old. Like uh, it looks warm. I, our job here was to take care of the smell. I think we can all agree this is the smell. Um, let's light this candle. Did, is, 
Is that how we get rid of smells? Yeah, what, what is... Uh, what if this yeah, oil yeah. sets the whole cave on fire? Yeah, why the fire? Yeah, we it's could go leaking it right into the... Side, but I think it's a, leaking right into the field, though, on our way in. I'm worried we could set the forest ablaze. That is not what, our problem. That we, I, hard to, I have it, there'll definitely idea. be a different smell. All right. Goldilocks, listen up. I have an idea. <laughs> what if... We pull it from this wall, and we bring it back to John Henry Elevator to see if he knows whose it is. The, the, the house is gonna smell. And maybe, like, look how much stuff maybe. has come out of this thing. It's clearly the worst. All right, I will Zed digress. is going to remove the sticks and whatever that Gambrio shoved up in there, and I'm gonna cast mending on uh, all the little veins and stuff. In hopes to seal the like open areas that might still kind of have this scent emanate. I'm gonna hope that I can kind of muffle the scent because I do like the idea of bringing okay. the half corpse back. Um, and maybe if I mend these little bits together, um, it won't be so pungent. Um, okay, so I'm just looking at the definition of amending. I don't know if it's going to do exactly what you're hoping, but I like the idea. So for creativity's sake, um, when you cast mending, uh, you can see that of the like 60 different tendrils that kind of spiral from this warforged like hole in the wall. Um, when you go up to it, because mending is a touch spell, you focus and you place your hands on the wall and you cast and as you're focusing on your arcane ability, you can see that one of the tendrils starts to kind of retract and go back towards the hole. So what you just did is working, but it's going to take a lot of man effort and you know sweat equity to make sure that this uh, this completely removes everything. Uh, uh, what do you guys think? Should I? Uh... I think that's a noble effort, and I appreciate the change you've tried to effect here today. Let's pull it from the wall. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll I, I look expectantly as Chode because I'm not going anywhere near the robot spewing oil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, I got this. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> okay, give me a athletics check. I'm going to kind of nudge Jinxie like you should be helping. You're seven or eight feet tall. <laughs> 25. Yeah, that's that's okay. So chode by chode by himself with this unnatural warforged <laughs> strength, grabs hold of this husk of a potential fallen brother, and starts to yank. And just as you think, no, there's no chance he's getting this thing out of the wall. Like steam starts kind of shooting from the different joints of of chode, and like an immense amount of energy and pressure is exuded. And all you hear is this giant. As the Warforged husk is pried free from the wall. And there's a little bit of oil seepage and spillage as it comes out of the wall. But um, it starts to slowly, slowly, slowly like evaporate and turn into smoke. And as the husk is removed from the wall, you can kind of start to see like the sands of time, uh, you know, sprinkling away. Like the black magic that was in this hole, it starts to kind of dissolve and fade slowly slowly like this isn't happening right in right in front of you uh but you can kind of sense that yeah this might be what we need to do i look at Zed and go the mending spell's taking effect <laughs> i give him a big old clap on the back and just yeah i think Zed's done this <laughs> all right i have the robot on my one armor all right sunshine what are we doing with this I looked at Zed. Oh, um, am I Sunshine? You are Sunshine. <laughs> Since you've been such a cheery folk as of late, <laughs> with all your sighing. All right, um, let's uh, let's take it take it back. Uh, I think maybe John would be able to give us some some insight, um, or at least we can share that we've we've caught the source, and whether he wants us to come back or whether he can. Hire some less skilled individuals to clean up the rest of this mess. Um, I think we've, we've done our fair share of work so far. J Jinxie can clean the mess. Uh, 
can Jinxie cast, um, oh god, where did it go? Uh, Thorn Whip and like vine over top of the lizard thing, just so it like, you know, just like this big mound of like vines and whips kind of thing cover over top of it. Sure, you can do that. What's the help me understand the reasoning just to help it like decompose? Yeah, and... just to like, yeah, like, like, like store and kind of like bury the, yeah, sure. the lizard. Yeah, so, so I'm gonna take vines and <laughs> okay, vines and thorns start kind of slowly uh, creeping across the ground and they start climbing slowly up this giant beast. Like, we're talking the size of like three SUVs back to back, like, just huge. And it's slowly, after a few minutes, it's completely covered in thorns and other leaves and natural uh, beauty. Cambria, as you approach the mouth of the uh, reptile, I need you to roll me a strength check to see if you can pry free some teeth. Okay. Check, check, check. Check one, two. <laughs> it's a three. Uh, no, the only thing that you're able to pull from the reptile's hand, it, or sorry, the reptile's mouth, is a bloody hand as you've cut your hand on one of its teeth. <laughs> uh, it's in there. Uh, it's in there like swimwear. Witnessing the uh, the thorns kind of creeping over this lizard and now realizing that that was Jinxie's poor interpretation of what I thought cleaning up this place meant... Um, I'm going to use the little uh, mind connection with the other two and say, uh, I, I don't know if this is quite considered clean. We've still got like an acre of seepy ground to deal with, but um, you can always appreciate a good effort from a, from a new friend. I'm going to probably At need some patience tried. with this one. He's trying. He's definitely trying. He's a bear. That helps, or an elephant. I'm not sure nope. which Bear one died. is the real shape. Bear died. Yeah, you reverted. Back I think. To, yeah, I think. Uh, no, I know he's in yeah, it's form. Just I'm just, he can become a bear because he's been back and forth since meeting him. Oh, okay. What, yeah. There you go. Which animal is real? I don't know. <laughs> um, shall we head back, gentlemen? Yeah. We shall. Uh, before we Gotta leave, I'm going to go my pick up my room. hand axe I threw. Smart mm. noted. Can I just take a peek around the other cave, see if there's anything left over from the miners? Uh, sure, you can roll me an investigation check. Zed is heading for the door. Now that I have my axe, I'll follow after Zed. That's like sure. a big robot half. Ten? Yeah, you're able to find one pickaxe that's fully intact and three copper, but there's really not much in here. I leave it. Okay. Um, is the plan now to head back to the Erasmus estate? Yes, or... that is where I will be attempting to lead this merry bunch of adventurers. <laughs> Perfect. Is there anything else that you guys want to take care of roleplay-wise on your walk back? Um, otherwise, we can kind of call it there. Um, I will say, when we're coming out of the, the mine, I'm going to say, uh, does it still smell like like hot garbage out here? Or is it, is the, the smell gone, you guys? I I can't I smell so. Cabbage. Can I use hot garbage. Cabbage. Listen here, Cole. Do you want Sounds to take like this? Yeah, I'll take the. I'll take the trunk test. I will drop this roll by that. Uh, sorry. What do you want me to roll? Or uh, well, it's just going to be a, a single roll because you normally get advantage, but you're exhausted. Yes. Um, just a d twenty. Just a well, uh, oh, perception. Okay, sorry. Uh, 15. 15. Yeah, so it f it smells as if um, when you arrived, it smelled as if months and months of sewage had been continually spilling onto the kind of field outside the mine. It smells like you have turned the source off, but it still smells like there's a bunch of sewage sitting in a field. So it smells 98% as bad as it did <laughs> an hour ago. Just a so, couple fireballs down the mine shaft. It's all I'm asking for. Still smells bad. Still smells bad. I'm not casting fire. Thanks, football. Um, actually, Came to, to answer the DM's earlier, back. 
Sorry, go ahead there. Oh, so yeah, Kicks Rock starts walking back, kind of starts walking towards the little town that it's close to instead of the Erasmus estate. Uh, Cambria. Hey, where you're headed going? this way. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's, it's, yeah, Zed knows. Zed knows where we're going. And I'm just uh, going to kind of walk back to the group. Leading ahead with Choden beside me, I believe. Um, I will be uh, kind of inquiring a little more about what we just saw. Um, Chode, uh, you said you didn't recognize that robot. Is it common for there to be uh, Warforged manufactured in, in places you're not familiar with? No. Every every single one that I ever fought with, we all came from the same place. We all had uh, the same inscriptions on this and we all bled the same. If you count this as blood, I don't know. Uh, hmm. But uh, yeah, this is this is very very new to me and it's almost kind of kind of worrisome that uh, somebody's trying to make knockoffs. And if there's a knockoff chode out there, he's gonna get it. That's all I have to say. What uh, what time is it roughly? Do we know? I'm forgetting how long it takes uh, to get there. You left right in the morning. It took you guys about an hour or so to get down here. We'll say that your whole escapade has been about an hour. Uh, we'll call it 11 or so, 12 noon. Okay, early afternoon. Of morning, we are near, the nearest city would be, what, the uh, Mephildir or Beaumont. Beaumont? I didn't know how south we were. Yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah, so you took the, the road south just a few miles. You're about halfway to Beaumont, if not a little bit closer to Beaumont itself than the Erasmus estate. Okay, I was... Okay. Um, Seth does want to head into town, but I don't think there's anything nearby that would interest him. So, um, yeah, let's... Uh, I'll continue to kind of lead back towards the Erasmus estate. Alright, while we're walking back, I will... In response to him asking me a question, be like, you asked me a question. I would like to ask you a question. Shoot. You seem uh, very familiar with the elevator estate. Um, is uh, Have you been there before? Or, like, just even just last night, and you knew where breakfast was, so it's... Um, it seems like you've either stayed there before or something. Well, I mean, we had breakfast in the same place we had uh, dinner the night before. But how'd you know where the bedrooms was? Because you you got up there pretty quick. Kind of just seemed like we a natural uh, left. natural place to go to. Which I will attempt yeah, with uh, the will deception switch the psychic chat to the, yeah, the non-deceiver. Psychic chat is now with Chode and Jinxie, and I'm just... Oh, crazy. God. <laughs> I think I have the only two of these Ooh. this uh, this campaign. That's another natty one. Does it matter that I have a plus eight to deception? Uh, it does, yeah, because it's Perfect. not combat. So that's, that's a nine, nine total. total. Speedy roll, roll an insight, meet or beat <laughs> nine. Goodness. <laughs> yes! <laughs> is this just Speedy yeah. who's rolling this? Yeah, well, Speedy was the only one to ask him. I was standing um, And I don't heard. want it to be like... Everyone gang up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't want it to be three to one and then it cover be blown. Uh, yeah, so Chode, honestly, like, this Zed guy seems pretty smart. Like, you gotta be pretty smart to know magic. And yeah, I guess it makes sense that you'd have breakfast in the same spot as dinner. And he knew it. The... I'm just gonna try All to right, talk to Chode and be like, that's not a good answer. I, I get it, you're convinced, but we'll talk about this later. And I'm just, I'm very frustrated with now because I don't think it was a good answer, but he's just on board. I mean, honestly, I don't really give a shit, but I was just curious. Curiosity killed the dog, as they say. I've looked around for a dead dog to steal. Put that in the food room. There's dogs out here? <laughs> Where? Uh, okay, well, he's brave enough for... to actually confront this, so he's just going to kind of slink back into the into the group. <laughs> to the group yeah. if that was everything i'll say that kind of the next hour hour and a half of travel goes by without a hitch um 
you make it back to the Erasmus Estate early afternoon, call it now 1, 1 30, and uh, that's where we will pick up episode four. Oh, very, very all right. interesting. They slayed me. Is that all you got, dead. DM? I'm assuming it was clearly <laughs> Is that lizard all you got? <laughs> Oil. I almost got eaten, pollution. So I would prefer <laughs> yeah, if that's all he's got. <laughs> lizard overpopulation. What a what a morning. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed our podcast, please rate and review five stars for the five stars of the show. A special thanks to Matthew for designing our map and to Isabel for creating our art. You can find their work on Instagram at Matthews underscore makings and at Laco Miles, L-A-C-O-M-Y-L-E-S. Thanks as well to Drew Hewitt and Arcan Anthems for doing our theme and background music. For music you too can use, visit patreon.com slash arcane anthems to add the perfect theme to your home game. You can follow more Eldritch Buds news on Instagram at Eldritch Buds or on our subreddit at r slash Eldritch Buddies.